If you're using Airtable, but you are not using interfaces in Airtable, then this video is for you. This is your moment to step into interfaces because it is going to change the way that your team implements Airtable. If learning more about Airtable interfaces is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission here to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools and Airtable is one of our favorite no-code tools that we use in practically every project. Now, as I said, in this video, we're going to be diving into interfaces. This is one of those features in Airtable that has been around for a little over a year, maybe two years now, but I'm still finding a lot of clients that I'm speaking with are not leveraging interfaces. And if that sounds like you, then as I already said, this video is so, so important for you because interfaces are going to change the way that you approach Airtable. But before I get into the heart of the video, I do want to first invite you to join me for some free templates. If you're new to Airtable or if you really want to start leveraging those interfaces, grab my five free templates. These are the five most common use cases that we see in Airtable. And we at Gap Consulting built five templates that we give away for free with instructional videos. You can sign up for those templates at gapconsulting.io slash templates, and I'll include links wherever you found this video. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. We've got to get into interfaces, right? And I'm going to actually be using interfaces from the templates that I was just telling you about. So if you want to go ahead and open those up and follow along, you can start leveraging those uh, interfaces within the templates as well. So, all right, popping on in here, this is what an interface can look like. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about, number one, why interfaces, number two, some of the most popular view types in interfaces, and then number three, I'm going to dive into some of my favorite features on interfaces. So number one, why would you use an interface? You know, this looks very different from the rows and columns that you might be accustomed with if you're accessing Airtable. So this bar on the left hand side is how my interface presents and these different components here you'll see that this where it says social media posts this particular piece is the interface and inside of the interface there are multiple pages so underneath social media posts you have overview upcoming social posts social media post calendar those are the pages that are within the interface so that's an important thing to take away from this and when you share an interface, this is the real reason of why an interface. Number one, when you share it, you're only sharing the pages inside of that interface with whomever you shared it with. They are never going to see the backend data. They are also not going to be able to edit or change the way that interface looks, assuming, of course, that they are not builders on your Airtable workspace. So this allows you to share access to your Airtable data without sharing everything. And if you've been following this channel for years, you'll know that before interfaces came around, well, we used to only have one option. If you were sharing access to Airtable, you were sharing the back end, what is now called the data portion of it. So this part right here, this probably looks familiar to you if you've accessed Airtable before, this is the database back end. And we don't want to share access here for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, people can see everything. We have no control, no, no ability to lock down uh, any kind of permissioning here. If somebody has access to the database, they get access to the database and all of it. They can go into every one of our tables. We cannot hide any of the fields. We can't hide any of the data. They get full access. Now, the other reason that you might not want this is because if you've added this person as a builder, then they could start deleting stuff. They can, uh, you know, write or break your formulas. There's a lot they can do here in the back end that would unintentionally perhaps break your system and sabotage your business. Now, I'm not saying that people do this out of spite or malice, but it has happened many times before when clients of ours have shared access with their teammates. Their teammates don't quite know what they're doing, and then they can break everything. This is a problem that you don't want to experience. And so I'm always surprised when I speak to people who are not leveraging interfaces because in my opinion, maybe one or two people at your organization who are championing Airtable should have access to the database backend. For the most part, 
I prefer, at least when working with my clients, to have the majority of people who are accessing the data, I want them in the interface because I can control what they access, I can limit what they see, and I can sure as heck lock it down to make sure that they're not breaking the backend database. And those are really, really important things that could honestly just face plant your business or your organization or your workflows, and you just don't want to do that. Let's skip the headache and not have to go through with that. So let's move on to number two then. When we are sharing an interface, what are the most popular interfaces that I tend to see or use over here at Gap Consulting? Well, this one that you're looking at right now is the overview page. And I love this one for pretty much every interface I build. So when you go to create a new interface page, by the way, you can click up at the top and say edit pages. And then notice that you know, we get this breakdown of the interfaces, we see the interface itself, and then we have the pages within the interface, as you see right here. I almost always include an overview type. And in order to do this, and in fact, in order to add any of the pages we're about to talk about, all you need to do is say add a page, and you can say where you want it to go. Now, these are the different layout types, right? So we can do a timeline view, uh, we can do calendars, Kanban, gallery, list, form, dashboard, overview, record review, blank canvas. Overview is the one I'm talking about right now. So if you make that selection, this is kind of a, you know, mock up of what it might look like. Do note that it's a desktop only interface because many of the interfaces here are mobile friendly. So check out the uh, list view, for example, that's what it looks like on mobile device. Uh, gallery view, same thing, right? So uh, you do have mobile access and those are important pages that I do want to talk about. But what we're talking about right here is just that overview. And what I love about the overview is it's kind of a place to set expectations. As you board new people, onboard new people to the organization and they get added to the interface, well then, it's so easy for them to kind of figure out what's going on, right? And usually inside of my overviews, I then create the links to the next couple of pages. So if somebody doesn't want to navigate the interface on the left-hand side and when they load it up, you know, assuming they've bookmarked that overview page, it's just one click for them to get where they need to go. But the other thing I love, and aside from being able to link to other pages in your interface like this, well, on that right hand side, you can really customize some links and share important resources with people who will be accessing this interface. Maybe you have some uh, SOP videos, or you have some instructions or the handbook of your organization. You can link to all of that stuff right here and now people have one central place it does not have to be an Airtable link it could be linking out to practically anything so i love the overview and i pretty much include it with every interface that i deploy it's usually the first page in every interface that i put out there um, but let's move on to some other popular types of interfaces and i'll actually just stop being in uh edit mode, I'll go to the actual live version of the interface here. And this is a list view. And I love list views because you have a lot of flexibility when you're building them. Now I didn't necessarily include it here, but you can opt to have tabs up here. So what you see here is instead the filter drop down. So if I want to look at a list, but I want to quickly filter it down to, uh, you know, particular social media post types, for example, maybe I want to see the different social media posts that are in draft mode. You know, imagine I had hundreds on this page and I didn't want to look through the long list, all I have to do is make that selection. My interface is immediately filtered down for what I've selected. Same thing here, right? So we can absolutely and quite easily add filters here. And when people want to reset them, it's just a simple click. Now also note that forms are included in many interfaces and it's pretty straightforward and simple, but this allows us to now create new records here. So in this particular interface, we have allowed our users to just add a new post right here. They can click here and it's gonna create a new record. But sometimes you might wanna apply more control over the new record creation. Maybe for example, you don't want people to half create a record. You don't want them to walk away without putting all of the information in. In this case, you would really like to leverage forms because you can make all of these different components, all the different fields, you can make them required. And so of course, by doing this, you can ensure that you have clean data and that you always have information there. So forms are another component of interfaces that can be added to practically any interface and they obviously create records in one table at a time. 
Now, also we've got calendar here. So calendar is another really popular one. These are very similar in many regards to the views that you already access in Airtable. But I just want to share with you that there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of opportunity here. And also note that you can control what happens when people click on stuff. So here I'm saying, okay, I get a little breakdown of what this is, but also note that I can expand it and I'm opening that record over here on the side. And this is great for collaboration because you can also toggle on comments so I can chat with my team here directly in the app and actually have that conversation attached to the record in question. So this is really, really helpful for collaboration, for making sure that people are looking at the stuff they need to be looking at, and they're not getting overwhelmed by rows and columns because most people don't like spreadsheets. They don't like the look and feel. And this feels really like a custom app, right? So lots of different options here, and I've only just started scratching the surface. Obviously, there are many different interface types that you can build. Uh, I've only gone through a couple, but you know, experiment with them for yourself and understand that you can control pretty much everything here. You can lock down what people see. You can lock down what they're allowed to edit. Are they allowed to edit? Are they allowed to create new records? All of that is fully customizable. Now let's get into the last part of the video, and that is what is my absolute favorite part of interfaces? And I gotta tell you, it's buttons. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Airtable buttons because they allow you to do so much. I don't feel like enough people really leverage the option of buttons though. So let's take a look at how they work. I would need to go in to edit the interface pages, right? Uh, pretty straightforward there. And inside of pretty much any place on the interface, I can add buttons. I can do it inside of the record. So right here, I've expanded this record. And if I want to add a button, you'll notice on the right hand side, all the way down, I can click buttons and I can add a button action. This just pops a button in here. Now, one thing I don't love is that I can't really change much about the button. It's, it's relatively uh, limited in the way that I can interact with it, but let's take a look and see exactly what it can do. So I can go to button properties and here are my optional actions. I can update a record and this is allowing you to set up certain rules so that when the button is pushed, certain values are automatically adopted for the record. So you could say like, mark this task complete and rather than having to go into the status of thing and you know select a different status you could just hit a button and you could add those actions to the button to do that for the record so that's one uh, let's go back to those button properties again we can also uh, copy link to record uh, we can delete a record so just you know with a button push delete that record uh, we can apply a specific template so if you have a certain kind of uh, template for let's say tasks and you want to create tasks for a new project you could just push a button brrr, set up all up uh, what's next? We also have the interface page, so we can directly go to the next step in our workflow if it's also in an Airtable interface. We can go to an external URL, go to a URL that is being stored in the record somewhere, like uh, imagine you have a client's table and it's you're storing the client website and you push the button and it just psh, takes you to the client's website. And then lastly, we've got the ability to run an automation. And this one, honestly, is my favorite because I can build an Airtable automation and allow people in the interface to just push a button and that triggers the automation to run for that record. But I don't have to include this in the record itself. Now, in this particular case, that's where we started looking. But let me uh, first delete this out, uh, get rid of that button entirely. So I'm going to come back out here and we're going to go back to this part and just click here and delete. Uh, so I don't have to include that button in the record details as I am currently positioned. Instead, I might want to add a button here to the overall interface. So then in this case, I just select here on the right hand side again. You'll notice that right now we have a button for adding post that opens up the form, but I can add another button and this one's going to be slightly different. We don't get quite as many options because I'm not inside of a record and so it doesn't have the context of a particular record, but I can still go to an interface page, I can open up a form, and I can go to an external URL. So there's a lot of flexibility here when adding buttons, and it really does allow you to then build an interface where you have locked everything down, 
And when you share that access with people, you can point them to all the different resources they need thanks to these buttons. So I would just recommend that if you're newer to interfaces, you definitely lean into buttons as well. And remember, of course, that when you're sharing an interface with somebody on your team, you are going to be incurring a cost for that additional license. So whatever plan you're on for Airtable, interface users act just like database users. They are going to incur the same cost, unless of course you're on the portals, which is a slightly more advanced thing that requires that they are external to your organization. But if you're curious about that, you can always check out the video we did about Airtable interface portals. But under normal circumstances, if you're sharing interfaces internally within your organization, bear in mind that you're incurring a cost for every user you add here, but it gives you way more control over exactly what they see. Hey, I know we went quickly in this video. I hope you got a ton of value from it. And of course, if you did, we would love it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if there are questions that we didn't get to, feel free to drop them below wherever the comments are or swing by our website for some more specialized help. But most importantly, my friends, keep on building.